How's it going guys? And in this video, we're gonna be talking about how does grading look like as an engineer at UC Berkeley? And to give a little bit of background on myself, I did chemical engineering at UC Berkeley and I graduated in 2018. And in addition to my specific program, which is hosted in the College of Chemistry, I took a bunch of classes in the College of Engineering as well as the College of Letters and Science. So basically I have a fair amount of exposure to the various classes and professors and courses that you can expect to get. So with, uh, with that out of the way, uh, the main thing that I'd like to jump into is basically what a lot of the courses are typically like. And so um, to give one example of what quantum mechanics was graded like for me is the raw score you get on the exam means very little. And so sometimes you'll hear people saying like, oh my God, I got 20% or 30% right out of the possible points you could get on an exam. But in reality, if the rest of the class also did really bad on that test, then the professors will generally have to move the curve to make sure that they uh, are passing a sufficient number of students. And so, um, you know, I think one of the fears people have is like, oh my God, you know, it's gonna be ridiculously hard grading and I'm gonna fail and I have no chance, I don't have to retake it. And the honest truth is from my experience is that you shouldn't work yourself up like that. Basically, um, you know, in my case, and I'm finding this too in uh, graduate school, is that basically with the way I approach my classes as a student is that I will put in my best and I'm also going to make sure that I have time for myself and I don't, you know, burn myself out trying too hard to get that last, you know, 10% of points that I could have gotten or whatever, like, you know, and obviously there's gonna be stuff that I just, you know, unknown unknowns that I no way would ever get that no matter how much I studied. So, um, you know, I think, and there's a good quote here, good is the, or perfect is the worst enemy of good. And so what I mean by that is basically like I focus and I encourage others to focus on really just making sure you understand the general ideas that teachers are getting at and really look at, you know, across all the lectures that they've given you, you know, what have been the key things? What things have you seen again and again? Because they're basically telling you what they think is important and what you need to know. And so if those are the only things you're gonna study, because obviously there's way too much stuff for you to memorize or to know how to do, make sure you know how to do the stuff that the teachers have made it clear implicitly through their lectures, or if you're lucky enough to have a study guide, which honestly I never got, um, most teachers will not do study guides. Um, so it's on you to make sure that you're following the lectures well enough to make your own study guides if you are doing that. Um, but basically just make sure you understand like what are the key things from this course? Um, I think some people might reference the syllabus to look to, you know, what are the course objectives here and reference that in terms of, you know, what is your, gonna, what is your strategy gonna look like um, for studying? But, you know, in my case, uh, yeah. So uh, getting back to like, what does grading specifically look like at UC Berkeley? As long as you're within one standard deviation of that average, you're guaranteed usually, you know, in, in the worst case scenarios, like a C plus, uh, or, you know, and then if you're two standard deviations below average, that's when you're kind of borderline, you might be failing that class because clearly, um, you're not up to what the rest of the class has been performing at. And so, you know, and, and this is kind of the reality with a lot of classes UC Berkeley, and I've said this before, is that you are not necessarily going to know this material any better than if you went to another university. Like the, the quality of the, uh, mastery of the content that you have, I would say is not that great. So, you know, you very well can find someone at another school who might understand that content even better. Um, but that's not the point. The whole point at Berkeley is how are you doing relative to the other students there? Um, because like if the teaching was crazy and none of the TAs or the grad students were able to really effectively teach the material and the average was really low or the test was way too hard, it's not gonna matter because everyone's score is gonna be low, so you're gonna be within that average. So for me, you know, I really just strove to make sure that I understood what I thought was gonna be good enough, and I went from there. And, um, you know, you can really burn yourself out and go down a lot of rabbit holes and think that you need to know how to do something that ends up being not even mentioned on an exam. And so for me, that's the kind of stuff that I was avoiding and focusing more on kind of like make sure I do stuff I enjoy, like go out on a bike ride or talk to a friend, you know, do stuff that you enjoy besides just worrying about the grades. 
Um, you know, so most classes at Berkeley, you're going to follow that structure of like, you know, these teachers are going to, um, just say, you know, as long as you're within that standard deviation of average, you wouldn't have much to worry about. You know, if you're a standard deviation above average, now you're looking at, you know, B territory, um, and two standard deviations above average is usually looking at like A territory. Um, and so, you know, as long as you're in that area, you're totally cool and you don't need to worry. And, um, you know, the other thing I think is really important just to give advice to students who are coming in or you're already there. Um, I think communication is extremely important in everything you do, no matter if it's Berkeley or wherever, making sure that your professors or your grad students are aware of what you're going through earlier rather than later is going to help you out because if you don't say anything, if you don't ask any questions, if you don't keep your professor informed of, you know, some family tragedy that just happened or, you know, how much you're struggling to keep up with the material, they're not going to know. And so when, or, you know, worst case scenario, you do very poorly in their class and you're talking to them and you're like, you know, what can I do to make up some points here if there's any opportunities and they've never heard from you before, it's going to look really bad and they're going to be less inclined to care because they want to see people who have consistently at least put in the effort to learn this material. And, you know, sometimes if you have a hard time, you know, writing stuff, you'll find professors who are willing to make accommodations. Um, but, you know, all this is going to require initiative on your end as a student to make sure that you're communicating this to the professors that they know that, you know, you're struggling. This type of test format doesn't really let you accurately demonstrate your understanding of the material. Those kinds of things, it needs to come from you. It's not going to come from them. They're not going to check in with you. You're going to have to go to them and tell them how's it going. So that is a key thing to take away here. And that's one of the things I think really separates UC Berkeley and um, some other schools apart from, from other types of education that I've had in the past, which is that there is a lot of emphasis placed on you, the individual, to learn this material. You're not going to have someone holding your hand, making sure you understand it. It's going to be on you to make sure that you thoroughly understand what the content of their lectures is, what are the key things you need to be taken away from this in order to move towards your goals or what the course objectives are. And, you know, you got to think big and you got to make sure that you're able to relate the stuff you're learning back to these things because that's what the finals are supposed to be, is a way of making sure that you've actually walked away from a class knowing what you set out to uh, learn in that specific class. So those are the key things. Um, and then, yeah, there are going to be a few classes that are, you know, kind of exactly like what it's like in high school where it's the very generic, you know, as long as you get 70% of the points in this class, you're going to pass. Um, and then you get different grades depending on how close to hundred percent you are. Um, and yeah, so, uh, I will say another thing if you're looking at UC Berkeley specifically is, and in, in the college of chemistry, one of the things that I did is doing research. Uh, if you are able to handle the additional work is very beneficial to your GPA because depending on how many hours you put in per week, you can get that to show up on your uh, transcript and it will help your GPA because if you're doing a good job in your lab and your postdoc or your PI likes you, um, or your, you know, whoever your grad student is who's mentoring you, um, they give you a grade. The professor has to sign off or the PI of that lab has to sign off on the grade that you get. But basically, it's like if you do good work um, and you are involved with the research, the school really likes that and they will put that on your transcript and you'll get a nice A or B, <laughs> hopefully an A, um, because they're usually pretty generous, um, especially if you're doing great work. Um, so that is a key thing to take away here is that there are ways you can help with your GPA in addition to just making sure you're communicating well and um, you know, finding good classmates who are able to work effectively with you. That was for me, and I'll say this until I die, like, you know, one of the biggest reasons why I was able to get through UC Berkeley's chemical engineering program was my friend Brendan. Um, and you know, he was an amazing guy and he taught me a lot. And so I really appreciate that. And, you know, I did my best to support him too, because we know we were partners, uh, and it was a really great, uh, mutually beneficial thing for both of us to to go through college like that together. And, um, you know, we both learned a lot and we're both, we both graduated together. So um, it's, it's, these are the things that, these are honestly the reasons why I think you go to school is to make these kinds of relationships um, happen and to meet people who are 
amazing. And so, you know, at the end of the day, it's about the people <laughs> and it's about making sure that you have the ability to work effectively with people and to learn content and to problem solve content or pro uh, stuff on a team because that's what we do every day as humans in life. Um, so thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and hope this video helps and I'll talk to you guys next time.